Is SpaceX Starlink getting faster or slower? Let's go find out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of misty morning and focus combination. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today's a technology day. We're going to give you a quick update on how fast SpaceX Starlink really is as of today. Now, if you guys are new here, I've been doing this for about 28 months now. All right, I've been doing updates on Starlink, how my service is, how things have changed. I've also given you a ton of helpful how-tos and tips and tricks and all kinds of other stuff. Matter of fact, I'll put a link over here. You could go check those out when you're done watching this video. I think I've created about 250 videos now just on SpaceX Starlink. And once again, how to make it better, quicker, and a bunch of commentary. So anyways, I wanted to give you an update. I usually do this about once a month. A lot of you guys love it because it gives you an idea of the progression, how things are going. Is it getting better? Now we know that Elon Musk and SpaceX ended up getting denied by the FCC in December of 2023. I was reading an article, it said that December 2023, the Federal Communications Commission or the FCC denied Starlink's application for $885.5 million in winnings from the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund. That's the RDOF. We've talked about this in the past. Basically, it's like a broadband subsidy auction that was going on, and they denied them. The FCC said that Starlink, quote, failed to demonstrate that it could deliver the promised service. The FCC also said that Starlink failed to meet the program's requirements. Now, we talked about this a while ago, and we said how, listen, this is just complete BS. They are, when I say they, SpaceX or Starlink, seems to be under a different microscope, one that is a hell of a lot more intense or powerful. So everyone else is under, let's say, a 2X microscope, where SpaceX Starlink is under a 200 X microscope. So it is a big difference. And I do think that they have been singled out when it comes to this, because there's companies out there that have not even placed a single satellite in orbit that are already getting subsidy. Where SpaceX Starlink is approaching 6,000 satellites in orbit and providing service to over 2.5 million people. Right. There's it's like apples to oranges, but the FCC is the FCC and this is what ends up happening. It is very biased and we've talked about this in the past. The way the FCC works is whichever party is in political office for those four years, they end up getting the majority. So when there's a vote, there's five people that vote, let's say, and you have three Republicans, two Democrats. That's if there's a Republican president. If there's a Democrat president, you have three Democrats and two Republicans, and they almost always vote down party lines. How in the hell is that helpful? Maybe one of you guys down below. I would love to know. Tell me how that is helpful. Yeah. So anyways, the bottom line here is the FCC said no. They could not reach their goal, even though their goal is not really due until I believe 2025. And this was the end of 2023. And they're like, no, we don't think you're going to get there. Well, how do you know? Ah, because we think, we believe that you're not going to be able to do it. And when I say do, what that means is they need to be able to not only get 100 to 200 megabits down, but the more important thing is, is SpaceX, Starlink, or any other broadband ISP that's getting this RDOF or that Rural Digital Opportunity Fund monies, they need to meet an upload requirement of 20 megabits. Now, Starlink has not been able to do it. Now, when I first came aboard in the beta days, yeah, we were getting close to 35 to 40, 42 every once in a while megabits up. But we haven't seen that since they ended up opening everything up to everyone. So once again, you have a ton of people. What I did today is I did some testing 
And I wanna show you some of these tests. I'll just put them here, there, elsewhere, or whatever. What I did is I did 11 tests all in a row. And those tests were from random servers, whichever servers that the speedtest.net wanted to, let's say, attach me to. It's always in Atlanta, Georgia, because my pop, my point of presence is in Atlanta, Georgia, instead of here in South Florida. That adds to latency, and I'm gonna get into latency in just a second. So we got 11 tests. I dropped the lowest one, which was like an anomaly, and then I did an averaging. So I'm going to show that to you and I want to go over some of that with you. But before we get into all this, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks yet, why the hell not? Pick them up. They are free. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down here. You can give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you enjoy this content, find it entertaining or maybe educational, throw the video a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. Share it with your friends, family, colleagues, share the channel. Please do that. That will help a lot. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and click this little button over here and then click all. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately, immediately, if not sooner. YouTube, do it. <laughs> Anyways, so let's take a look at these tests. Now, once again, maybe I'll run them maybe here, there, I mean, I'll put some little clippets of them. So starting out from the beginning, we got 190 megabits down and 17 up. The next test, we got 205 by 19, then 305 by 10, 305 megabits down by 10 megabits up. That 305, that's an anomaly. There's another anomaly that was like 88 megabits down. That was like a little hiccup. But 305, that was amazing. I haven't seen in the 300s forever, literally back in the beta time. So that was good. Third test was that 305. The next one was 264 by 18, 217 by 12, 245 by 29. 29 megabits up. That is sweet. That is nice. That's what we want to see. The next one was 243 down by 11 up, 162 by 13 up, 174 down by 17 up, and then 162 by 17 up. So if we add them all up on the download, we get 2,167, divide that by 10, because those are the number of results we got. We end up with 216.7, let's call it 217 megabits down. Not bad. The upload is 163. We divide that by 10, we get 16.3. Let's call it 16. So we're getting on average about 217 megabits down and 16 megabits up. Not bad. But where the download is definitely much faster than it was, because for a while there, we were sitting right around 100 to 140 megabits down and about 10 megabits up for a long period of time. Once they started rolling this out crazy and there was no more waiting list and we went up to that 2 million, 2.5 million clients worldwide, things slowed down a lot. But things are starting to increase, which is really good. Now, the problem that I'm having here is with that upload speed. I think the 217 is nice. That is a good number. Would I like to see 300 plus? Yes, I would. Can they do that? Yes, they can, just not yet. But the upload speed is still an issue. I would think by now we would be at that 20 mark. They need to get to that 20 mark sooner than later. Now, I understand that they were saying that they were going to give everyone 100 meg down and 10 meg up. The problem with that is the FCC says that that's just not broadband. Broadband, we need to see that 20 megabits up. And once again, they need to do it sooner than later, in my personal opinion. How are they going to do it? Well, they're going to do it with, obviously, the version 2 mini satellites, which are 4x the capacity of the version 1.0s and the 1.5s, which is great. And there's about a thousand of them now in low Earth orbit that are operational. So that is fantastic. But the numbers are still not there yet. Why? Well, I was looking at my pings. My latency is sitting right around 30 to 40 milliseconds. Now, is that good? Is it bad? It's not great, to be honest with you. Elon Musk has said that he wants to see sub 20 milliseconds latency. The question is, can he do it? 
And in the video, I talked about how he can absolutely do it. People don't understand this, but the latency between your dishy and the satellite and then back down, because that's how data works, it sends a packet and then a acknowledgement packet comes down to say, yep, we got it and everything is copacetic. Or no, there's a problem, resend it, okay? Like an ACK packet or an acknowledgement packet. Anyways, that round trip is sub eight milliseconds. Eight milliseconds from your dish up to the satellite and back. That's not bad, right? So where is all this latency happening? If we know that it's not from your dish to the satellite, where is the latency? Well, the latency, the slowdown is at your ground station or at your point of presence or your POP, basically your network operations center. So how will SpaceX Starlink fix this situation? I think what they'll end up doing is doing away with this ground stations or make the ground stations at the location of the POPs and then send the data via satellite, bounce it from satellite to satellite to satellite down to the POP station where it needs to go instead of to a ground station near the location of the user. Why is this or how does that work? The bottom line is, is all of the new satellites, some version 1.5s, the 2.0 minis, they all have onboard lasers and they form a massive mesh network that communicates through lasers at the speed of light in a vacuum between each other. So instead of you having to use a ground station near you, that's all it has to do is take that data that you just sent up to a satellite and then send it from satellite to satellite to the location that it needs to be. For example, for me, it would be Atlanta, Georgia. So instead of like right now, the data from my dish, goes up to a satellite. From a satellite, it comes down to a ground station near me. And then from that ground station gets shipped off through fiber optics to a pop 750 miles north of me in Atlanta, Georgia. How about if we got rid of that and we ended up going from me up to a satellite, then to another satellite that's sitting over Atlanta, Georgia, and then down. We do away with that ground station, so we lose hops. Less hops is good. I talk all about hops in that video too. What the hell is a hop? <laughs> Anyways, I foresee them getting faster, but there's certain networking that needs to be done to actually make this happen. Once again, I'm looking at my pings right now and we're seeing anywhere from 34, 37, 41, 31, 28. Oh, there was an anomaly there. That was pretty good, 32. So they're not bad. Once again, they're averaging about 30 to 40 milliseconds. We need to see sub 20 milliseconds. Now, just to get an idea, all right, if you have cable, usually cable will give you anywhere from about 15 milliseconds to about 25 milliseconds. Whereas if you have fiber, well, you're gonna be anywhere from one millisecond to about 10 milliseconds. The bottom line here is we want to see that sub 20 milliseconds, number one. Number two, the FCC has said we need to have 20 megabits up. If not, you're not going to get the money. They already denied them. Even though SpaceX Starlink won that RDOF funding, let's say, doesn't matter. They denied it. They said, even though you won, you're not gonna get it. And the reason being is we don't think that you're going to be able to do it. You're currently not doing it and we don't think that you'll be able to by 2025. And that's the end of it. So we'll see what ends up happening, but for us, right? For us to get better service, the bottom line here is they need to sooner than later increase that upload speed. And the only way in my personal opinion to do it is to get more of the version two mini satellites into orbit, number one. And number two, they need to start cutting out ground stations because I really do think that the ground stations are the bottleneck and not the pops, the point of presence, because the point of presence, if you guys don't know it, are usually sitting in these massive hubs, these NOx, these network operation centers, literally where Google is sitting, right? So they have a ton of redundant fiber that goes there. That is not the problem. I believe the problem is in the ground stations and getting the data from the ground stations through the fiber to the location where the pop is. For me, once again, it's 750 miles away. Now, the other thing that's going to help 
is once they have the version two maxis, let's call them, maybe by the time they get them into orbit, they'll call them the version three satellites. At that point, we're also gonna see another 4X increase in speed or in capacity, and that's going to be a major, major difference. Just for a comparison, just think of like a version two mini as like the size of a refrigerator, whereas a version two maxi or a version three will probably be the size of a small bus, okay? It's gonna be a bigger satellite, right? a much bigger satellite, maybe twice the size, three times the size. We don't know because even though the version twos that were originally created that were going to be in low earth orbit last year, they're constantly updating them. Now they have the E node Bs on board, which basically turns those satellites also into cell towers, but on orbit, which is kind of cool, right? You can walk outside with your cell phone and just make a phone call, crazy. Absolutely crazy. It's not there yet, but they are working on that happening. So anyways, guys, things are definitely moving forward. And seeing these numbers definitely shows that the speeds are increasing. Once again, 217 megabits down by an average of 16 megabits up with a latency of about 30 to 40 milliseconds. That's where I am as of today. And I'll do another update probably next month and let you know if things are getting worse or better. So. Anyways, guys, I want to hear from you. What do your speeds look like? What does your latency look like? If you don't know how to do a ping, you could do it from Windows or from Mac. You go to a command prompt and you type ping, P-I-N-G space, 1.1.1.1 or 8.8.8.8. Depends if you want to use Cloudflare, if you want to use Google's name server, either way. If you're on a Windows machine, do a space dash T, so it keeps on doing the ping forever, basically, in perpetuity. If you're on a Mac, you don't have to do that. Just type in the ping, hit enter, and there you go. And you can watch those pings and see what your latency is. Also, if you have a moment, go to speedtest.net, do 10 tests and do an average, and let us all know what your speeds are and where you are located on the planet. This is very important, because I know people in the US are getting slower speeds than people in Europe. So. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, once again, throw the video a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe, like I said before. Click that button, do all of those things. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years. Pick something up if you see something that you like. Also, check out my tees and my merch and everything else. I would really appreciate your support. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.